I've been working on a series of videos that will teach you some basic self-reliance. Some skills, some techniques, some things you can practice that will help you develop a mindset of being self-reliant. So that you'll have some confidence that you can be self-reliant if you need to be. We'll look at preserving meat, making your own soap, how to make an emergency shelter out of nothing but materials on hand, like if you just have a, a poncho and some twine. The series is going to run several weeks, so I hope you enjoy it. In this first batch of episodes, we're going to look at how to find a good location for your survival cache, how to recover it, and what to put in it. So I'm going to go up there and point at it, and you'll see how close you have to be before you spot it. thing about this spot, if you hang it on the other side of the tree, you could walk by it for years and never see it once you knew it was there. I can hide something in there and even when in the winter when the trees lose their leaves, all that brush is going to be an effective concealment. See, this is older forest, so you have a higher canopy, you've got less undergrowth, and it's more open, and you can see a long way through the woods. So I'd rather be somewhere that's got some younger growth and less of a canopy. So I think I like the first location better. Let's go back. I can get into these woods on foot quickly from the house and then get to the cache without having to expose myself so much. To get to the other location, I've got to cross a fairly open area and then travel through open canopy woods uh, that don't have a lot of concealment in the undergrowth. And I would rather walk through dense undergrowth and younger forest to get to the, to the cache to recover it. Uh, so I'm not as exposed in case I'm traveling daytime. I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about some of the principles of hiding things. You can take either one of these pipes and bury it in the ground and they're both equally concealed. We're illustrating here the difference that's created by the principle of camouflage, which is where you disguise your container into something that's going to blend into its surroundings. So I'm going to take both of these tubes up in here and I'll clearly illustrate the fact that the white one is a lot more visible than the one that's brown. This is going to allow me to hide this without digging uh, to give me a quick recovery. Now, I definitely recommend that you have some buried caches that are more concealed than what I'm going to demonstrate here, but I want to show you how to do it this way because you need to have a cache that's going to allow you a quick recovery without tools. Because once you've buried your cache into the ground, for one thing it's going to be a lot more difficult to find again, and for another thing it's going to be more difficult to recover out of the ground without tools, or you're going to have to take tools to it, and it's going to take longer and you need to have one that you can recover in a hurry. I came up a little farther this time and I found some cedar trees, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Also, that's a nice little camping spot if I've got to camp, which is not too far away from the location. So that's where I'm going to show you how to hide this thing. Okay, what I'm going to do is hang this up in the tree right next to the tree trunk. You can even put water inside of a cache container that's going to freeze. If you put it, the water in a container that's going to be, um, that's going to allow the water to freeze and expand several cycles without damaging the container. So that's a possibility. Another is simply to have your cache near a water source, a steady water source, even if it's not very clean, like a muddy pond would work fine too. And then all you need is a filter or a strong stomach. I'm sure it's obvious 
that this container is not actually full. I'm not gonna leave this here. Since I'm burning this location, this is not actually where I'm gonna have my survival cache. Before I hang this, I'm gonna demonstrate just how well concealed this thing can be just by laying it on the ground in the right place. You're 20 feet away from the cache right now. And even if you knew exactly where to look, this is all you would see. That's direct line of sight. That's the best view of this thing you're ever gonna get from the woods. Step over here, just five feet in this direction. And that's all you've got. Right here. So camouflage helps to hide it a lot. I just use spray paint, it's easy. Okay, let's hang it. Use a dark colored paracord, of course. Don't use a bright red or pink. So I'm gonna make a loop with a clove hitch. Finish it off with a couple of half hitches. And that way once I hang it, it won't slip over the lip. Okay. I'm giving myself plenty of line here. I'm just gonna finish it with a half hitch and then a slippery half hitch, which is just a half hitch with a loop, which holds tight and then comes loose when I tug. So I'm gonna go up there and point at it and you'll see how close you have to be before you spot it. Showing you how to hide it. Now we're going to talk about recovery and I'm going to show you what to put in it. Well, I'm going to take this down because I have to hide it in a location that will not be known by anybody watching this video. 